and we're going to deal with it. Abortion would have killed me. And I'm a preacher, a pastor. Come on up in this church house. I lay hands on the sick. And they recover. I cast out demons in Jesus Christ's name. And people get free. I touch the blind eye and the blind eye open. I've raised the dead for Jesus. You hear me? Jesus does the work. But if I had been aborted, I couldn't have been used. What are you doing for the Lord if you had been aborted? What are you doing in society? You're a business owner? Well, you wouldn't, that business wouldn't be anywhere without you. School teacher. So you had been aborted, all those students that needed you to teach them. My daddy was a school teacher, Dad Gummies. Suppose his mama had aborted him. And my mama, too, in elementary school. Suppose, suppose that mama would have aborted my parents. And my sister, a school teacher. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We're talking about saving lives in the belly of the female. In the belly of the womb. Come on, I'm ready to get started. Listen, I need you to share. I need you to go on here and I need you to tell everybody they need to come on here so they can get going, find out what's going on because we're going to deal with abortions. We're going to make sure that we destroy the works of the enemy. God bless you, Kim and God bless you, woman of God. In Jesus' name. Okay, I'm ready. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm ready to get started. I love you, Lord, with all my heart and all my soul. And I know you love us. That's why you created us in your image. Because you love us. You love us so much that you sent Jesus, your only begotten son, to die for us. Hold on. He sent Jesus to die for us. But Jesus had to come as a man. As a human being. So he was born out of a human being's body, a woman, Mary. Oh, let me tell you something. Suppose Mary had aborted Jesus. Mm-hmm. Then the devil would have won. Everybody on earth would be on their way to hell right now. Good and bad. Come on, somebody. This thing is real. Abortion is demonic, okay? Abortion is totally demonic. No getting around it. It's murder. It's an abomination. It's a sin. It's a curse. Any name you want to put on it from the Bible to show that it's satanic, put it on there. Label it. My God, yeah, legalized murder is still murder. You hear me? So, y'all, come on, let's get ready. Now. I, <laughs> Minister Twileen Lee, fighter of, for pro-life, she says sure is demonic, Minister Twileen Lee, she preaches on it, she in conferences, abortion, co pro-life conferences and everything, she's out there, God bless you Mr. Twileen Lee, keep up the good work. To save baby lives, unborn children lives, and to save the mamas from going through all types of mental and emotional problems after the abortion. Come on, somebody. This is real. This is real. Oh, Catherine Griffin said truth. It's the truth. Now, I told you that I want to teach it to you like you're 12 years old. I want to touch on a lot of different things. So. As I'm doing this every Wednesday night at 9 p.m., my God, my God, I just want you to just see what's going on. A lot of organizations are trying to make the unborn child seem like it's not even a human being. See, that's the trick right there. That's the trick. If it's not a human being, then it's not murder. Mm -hmm. If it's not a human being, 
So you uh, abort it, it don't make no difference. It's not human anyway. Liar. But they want you to call it a fetus. F-E-T-U-S lie. It's a fetus lie. Fetus is not even in, it's nowhere in the Bible. Because there's no such thing as a fetus. You hear me? Fetus means not human. Fetus is like an algae, a mold. A fetus is like what? Nothing. They want you to think there's nothing in your belly. Abort it. Ah, uh, excuse me. It's not a fetus. It's a created human being, a living, breathing creation of God. My God. Or they call it a parasite. You know they lie when they call it a parasite. Fetus, parasite, they want to call it a lot of things. Uh, they want to call it everything but what it it really is, a human being. The baby is not an it. The baby is human. All that other stuff is an it. The baby in the belly is a person. A boy or a girl. A boys and girls. Come on, somebody. Now, uh, let me say this to you first about, about um, abortion. You know, there's so many reasons to have abortions. So many reasons. They've got a long list of reasons to have abortions. Okay? And I went over a few of the reasons that I found I came up with. I went over it last Wednesday. You can go on YouTube and see the replay. Abortion would have killed me. But let me say this to you right now. I told you that in week six, there's brain activity in the baby. Brain activity. Week seven, tongue and vocal cords begin to form. Week number eight, distinct fingers and toes are visible. Sounds human to me. Baby has eyelids in eight weeks. Week number nine, the baby starts to yawn. Whew, baby yawning. What? During week number nine. Week number 10, fingernails begin to form. Week number 11, a baby can kick, stretch, and hiccup. Kick. A baby can kick. Oh, a baby can kick. That's a living child. That's a living human being. And that baby can stretch. And that baby can yawn. Hold up. Week number 12. Reflexes and nerve cells develop. Week 13. Fingerprints. I got something to tell you about that fingerprint and footprint thing. I'm going to show you something about that. So what week is that? Let me see. I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. No, I'm going to put a cross next to that. Uh, hold on. Week 13. Week 13 of a child. And all these weeks, they, they have aborted them from six weeks on up. 14 week baby can produce urine. Okay. All right. Okay, we heard all that, right? Uh, now, like I said, I'm going to be running through and touching on different things. I'm going to make a whole lot of statements from my research. But I just want you to say that. Guess what a, a congressman just said this week? On the pro-life issue. He said. We don't want to talk to you about your. Pretend life. Pretend life. What did he mean by. Pretend life. A fetus. A parasite. A minister. Twilene, whatever else they want to call it. He said. The congressman on the microphone. And from the whole world, that we don't, we are not going to deal with you over this pretend life. So, a, a woman is pregnant. She has a baby on the inside of her, but she's pretending. The, the baby on the inside is pretending to be 
living. According to what he said. And he's a U.S. congressman. College educated. Pretend life. He's going to regret saying that one day. In Jesus name. Now I want to say this to you right now. Voters in Colorado. Just overturned. A ban. On late term abortion. Do you hear me? Human beings. Colorado had a ban on late term abortion. Woo -woo. That's when that baby got fingerprints. Footprints. Yawning, kicking, stretching. Eyelids. Fingernails. Everything. And now the voters, who are these voters? Are they, do they go to church? Do they read their Bible? Do they love Jesus? Do they believe in Jesus Christ? Do they believe in the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Where are their children? Where are their children? Mm-hmm. Where their mom and daddy raised them up in Colorado. Colorado got enough issues. Now they are overturning a ban on late term abortion. 22 weeks at 20. Hold on. I told you that at 14 weeks, the baby can produce urine, fingerprints. You tell me they're killing babies at 22 weeks. Twice what I gave you almost. 22 weeks, a baby is capable, listen to me, here is the thing, honey, listen to this, for my research, at 22 weeks, babies are capable of experiencing pain, uh-oh, 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 you hurting a defenseless baby, you hurting them? You're putting them in pain and you're lying and trying to tell the baby's mom that the baby won't feel a thing. Just suck the baby out. The baby won't feel a thing. You're a liar, doc. Abortionist. You're a liar from the pit of hell. If you're born babies, you're possessed by demons. If you're born babies, you are possessed by devils and demons. By Satan, by Lucifer, is your daddy. You killing babies, Lucifer is your father. You are father of evil. You are totally overcome with evil. You know you murdering babies, you pull them out and send the babies. And some of the babies that come out are not even dead yet. Throw them over on a pile on top of a whole lot of dead babies. And some of those babies are still kicking, still flinching. And you look at them and keep on aborting. Y'all better hit me up in this church house. This is evil. And if you don't hear it with me, and you were a part of abortion, you had an abortion before, look, God forgive you. Come on here. I'm not coming against anybody who, who's had one and repented. And now they're serving the Lord never to abort again. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the ones who thinking and planning on aborting. From this second on. We've got to shut them down. We want to help somebody. I pray that this gets shared to somebody who's planning an abortion, who's thinking about it, and they hear this or see me talking about this and taking them to the word of God. And they say, I'm not doing it. I'm going to have my baby. God gave me this baby. Satan didn't put that baby in there. Okay, how you got it? Satan can't make a baby. Satan cannot form a human being. Okay, how you got pregnant? Satan cannot make human babies. He don't have the power. In Jesus' name, only God can do that. So, 22 weeks, late-term abortion. Capable of experiencing pain. And guess what? Else? Isn't this cute? He will stick his tongue out. A baby will stick his tongue out. Suck his thumb. What? 
can recognize his mother's voice. Ooh. You know how a mama has a baby in, it, in their stomach and they're rubbing their belly? They're not just rubbing their belly. They're comforting the baby that's on the inside living. My God, my God. I remember, yeah. <laughs> I sure was teaching on abortions before. God called me back to it. He called me back to it. I'm glad he did. I'm glad he did. I'm glad I'm back on. Because I'm on a mission from God. I just came off a 40-day fast on February the, uh, the uh, 9th. And I feel like a spiritual superman right now. I'm armed and dangerous for God right now. That's right. I'm armed and dangerous for God. The devil can't stop me, can't kill me. And the devil so can't kill me prematurely. He want to. He can't kill me because I know too much. Holy Spirit, I got the whole arm of God on me, protecting me from the devil in Jesus' name. He can attack me, but he can't destroy me. He can attack me, but he can't kill me. Come here, bring it here, baby. He give it here. She bought me the anointing oil. I'm anointing all y'all right now. In the name of Jesus, y'all ready? I'm going to anoint y'all right now. As I anoint you for warfare. As I anoint everyone who's looking, who's listening. I'm going to anoint you for the task at hand. I'm anointing you right now with all. So that you can war good warfare. So that you can shut down the abortion demon. So that, that you can help the uh, young ladies to stop killing their babies. So, so that you can get an abortionist to stop aborting. And guess what? So we can close down every abortion clinic in the, not only in your neighbor, in your state, but in the United States of America and in the whole world, including China, who, 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 who is aborting like an aborting machine over there. Now, now then you only have two children. After two children, you try to have a third one, they're going to abort you. And they'll throw your butt, man, they'll come in China, they'll come and drag you out of your home. They'll drag you out of your house and take you to the abortion clinic. And you can't do nothing about it. You can't even sue them. You can't even call the police on them because the police is with them. Guess who else is with them? Jesus. Jesus can see. Jesus can touch. Jesus can hear. And guess what else he can do? Anything and all things. I'm glad, too, you're talking about it. Not too many pastors are touching this subject. They suspended the topic from the pulpit. I'm going to tell you something right now, Mr. Twilight. I'm going to tell you how, how real you are. I was in church from babyhood on up to now. I've never heard it in church in my life. I spent 32 years in one church. Never brought it up. I spent half of that in another church as a kid. They never brought up abortions. Never touched it. You hear me? Never touch, do not abort, do not abort. Never taught the young ladies growing up on it. Abstain from sex, but I might as well say what I want to say about this. Hold on. Abortion, if you, if you decide to have sex with your boyfriend, you're a young woman, and you'll have sex with your boyfriend. I got this from a, from a South Carolina um, senator, representative. She got pregnant at 16, she said. She was graduating or whatever she was doing, partying, and she got a little frisky, and then she got pregnant. So if you're having, a, um, if you're having sex with your boyfriend, and then you get pregnant, your baby, your boyfriend, and you produce the child, she said abortion should not be an option. It's, just, it's not an option. Sex with your boyfriend, you have to have the baby. You have to have the baby. That's your boyfriend. You and him are shook shook. Lovers. Now you have a and now and now you and him will have sex. Now you want to abort the child. Uh-uh. Abortion. So she said abortion is not an option. She said her friends told her to get an abortion. She was 16 years old. Top of her class in high school. 
Cum laude, baby. Number one. And she's pregnant. Friends. 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 How many need them? Friends. How many want them? Friends. Her friends told her to go get an abortion. But guess what she did? Come on, Jackie Sack. Come on up in here. Yes, yeah, Pastor Angelo on. Yeah. So she went to have the abortion, but they let her. She heard this sound through their stuff. She said she heard this heartbeat, some clicking, clicking. She said all of them have a clicking. She said there's a clicking. There's a clicking in there. There's a clicking. And she said when she had that clicking, she said, oh, my God, I got a real human being inside of me. I'm not killing this baby. So she had the baby. Abortion would have killed that baby. She had the child. The child is now 25 years old, graduated from college, and is an entrepreneur. Woo! Do you hear me? She just gave this. She is a representative of the state of South Carolina, baby. Yeah. Now, Colorado, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over all the voters in Colorado. When this comes up again, you will vote to ban late-term abortion and never vote against it again. Colorado, you hear me? In the name of Jesus, Father, please release angels to Colorado right now. Because Colorado need to repent of this. They need to repent right now. In whose name? In Jesus' name. Woo, glory to God. Now. I haven't gotten to Planned Parenthood yet. Because this is my second week on. Oh, but when I get to Planned Parenthood, it's going to blow your mind. When I finally get to them, you're going to know the truth about the lying, deceiving Planned Parenthood. The school teachers, the principals, the Board of Education need to be listening to this. The ones that let Planned Parenthood come on in the schools, sit down, have a talk with my girls. Yeah. Wolf in sheep's clothing, baby. Walking the halls of the schools. Smiling. Pretending to come and look out for the little girls. And the little boys. Mm, no, they have an abortion agenda disguised as health care. Whoa! Don't be in unawares. The devil wants you in unawares. <laughs> when you're in unawares, you're going to be um, deceived real quickly and for a long time. Now, speaking of abortionists, and Planned Parenthood. Jackie Sutton on Facebook said, I had a friend that had three abortions. It was a long time ago. Well, Jackie, a whole lot of people had abortions many, many years ago. I was part of two abortions many, many years ago. I know preachers had abortions. They're preaching now. God is a forgiving God. We repent of it. A lot of us young, dumb, Foolish, and we did a lot of foolish things. Abortion was one of them. You know, having sex like crazy and having abortions. But uh-uh, God is a forgiving God. Jesus came and we might be free. Set us free from our sins. As long as we repent, that will turn back. I know women have more than three. They come to my church. I know a preacher right now that had, th had about 13 abortions. I'm going to talk about her one day on here too. I got her testimony. 13 abortions. And she's an evangelist now. See what God can do? You can change your whole life. Let me tell you right now. I'm going to show you in the Bible. I started last week, but I didn't finish. I'm going to show you in the Bible where who was the original, well, I'm not going to say the original abortionist, but one of the main abortions during Jesus' time. And I'm going to show you the beginning of Planned Parenthood during Jesus' time. Ready? Here we go. In the Bible, in the second chapter 
of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, I had gotten there from last week. I'm going to show you something. I did the first chapter and I showed you how Mary was a spouse to Joseph to be married. She's a virgin. How many virgins have gotten pregnant? She was a virgin. She and Joseph are going to marry. But all of a sudden, Mary's pregnant and never knew a man. But she's pregnant. Who's going to believe that? Who's going to believe she never knew a man? She got a baby on the inside of her belly. But she's pregnant. And here is Joseph, the just man. He could have told everybody she was pregnant and they could have, they would have stoned her. Did you hear me? They would have stoned Jesus' mama if Joseph had busted her all out and talked about her and all this. But hold up. Joseph could have just said, you know what? I'm not marrying you. You got a baby by somebody. But an angel of the Lord <laughs> spoke to Joseph in a dream and said, man, that baby's of the Holy Ghost. Marry her. That baby is, is Jesus. So Joseph did. But hold on. Now let's get to, yep. Now let's get to the part where uh, Planned Parenthood began to show up. <laughs> and then Planned Parenthood showed up first. I'm going to show you this. Planned Parenthood will always show up first a lot of times. And then the abortion is right behind Planned Parenthood's lie and deception. Let me show you from the Bible Planned Parenthood's lie and deception. Here it is. And then, we're, and then we'll show you the abortionists. All of them is in, guess what? All of them on the same demon, same package, same devil. Here we go. In Matthew, the second chapter, uh, it says this. Verse number two. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? He's a wise man. Where is he born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and I come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. You got me? But hold on now. Now get this. Are you ready? Go to verse number seven. Then Herod, when he privately or privately called the wise men, here, here it is. Hear how Planned Parenthood came in, inquiring of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Planned Parenthood. Jesus is being born in Bethlehem. Wise men, let me know where he is, when you find him. And I'm going to come and worship him. I'm going to bring some health care. I'm going to bring some pamphlets. I'm going to bring counseling, uh, prenatal care. Uh, I'm going to bring a whole lot of stuff. Uh, 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 take some blood tests and some this and some that. Uh, uh, let me know so I can come and worship him. That's Planned Parenthood spirit. Woo. So, they departed and they left. But hold on. But then God spoke to them like he's speaking to us. Said Planned Parenthood is a lie from the pit of hell. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to, oh, here he come, to Herod. H-E-R-O-D. Better look at it. Not return to Herod. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Not return to Herod. Not return to Herod. Uh-oh. They departed to their own country. Hold on now. Oh, you better get this. Here it is. And when they were departed, verse 13 of chapter 2 of the Gospel of Matthew. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. There's Planned Parenthood. There's the abortionist. Herod spirit. There it is. Faking like he want to come worship. 
but he want to come kill. Fake like he want to come counsel and help, but he want to kill, want to destroy. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, woo. Verse 16. Here are the abortions. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying in Ramah, in the world, in America, in your state, in your city, was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel reaping, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. Whoa. Parent Plan Hook came in, faking. Then the abortions, the Herod spirit, showed up and killed all those babies. All those babies. Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comfortable because they are not. There are a whole lot of people who regret their abortion. There are a whole lot of women who regret the abortion. And on the inside of their emotions and their feelings, they are weeping and lamentating. They are weeping. They are mourning in their spirit. And a lot of them for years. I told you last week, one girl had an abortion. About a month later, she murdered herself. She was weeping and mourning and lamenting. She was. She couldn't shake the guilt and the condemnation from killing her child. So she killed herself too. Mm. See how this abortion demon works. He's evil. He's very, very ugly. So, let's anoint you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you pour out fresh oil from the windows of heaven into this bottle. I pray you will purify this oil, sanctify this oil, consecrate this oil for Holy Ghost, with Holy Ghost for Holy Ghost work. Glorify this oil, Father, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Woo, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you're anointed now. Now, save the baby. Pro-life. We need to save these babies. Now, as I look at my research notes, I have no, um, how can I put this? I'm just, I go through a lot of things. I don't need a rhyme or reason. I just need to bring you the facts. Hold on now. Now, a writer named Michael Spellman, he wrote some reasons for abortions. Uh, someone named Ann Emerson told men who have affairs and mistresses are more open to birth control and abortions for obvious reasons. Uh, I got something to tell you about birth control, okay? Oh, man, hold on. Do you, have you ever heard of a word called eugenics? Eugenesis. Eugenesis. Sound like the book of Genesis, but it is not. Eugenesis, 1883. Uh, guess what? Planned Parenthood practiced this from the very beginning. Eugenesis. See, this demon is strong. It's a science that tries to improve the human race by controlling which people become parents. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Back it up, Pastor. Pastor, I've never heard of that word in my life. Well, you're going to hear of it right now. Eugenesis. E-U-G-E-N-I-C-I-S. Mm. A science. Mm. Science is not a friend when you use abortion. A science that tries to improve the human race. By controlling which people become pre uh, become parents. Whoa. Well, that's how Planned Parenthood started. It started with trying to make sure that the poor people, the ghetto people, didn't have no babies. Messing up the country. 
And a lot of will make sure that mm, people of color didn't have no babies. Messing up the country. It deals with the improvement as by control of, of, of human mating, of hereditary qualities of a race or a creed. Woo, demonic. Let's see. Okay, so I gave you some of that from uh, from from last time. I want to show you another um, abortionist. Uh, let me show you another abortionist in the Bible. Are you ready? Go to Leviticus. Turn your Bible to Leviticus. I'm going to show you something. I'm there already. The 18th chapter of Leviticus. This is before Jesus. Abortion been around a long time. Abortion, y'all, this is real. It's the same demon coming a different way. Let me tell you something about Satan. There's nothing new under the sun. Satan came one way through abortion earlier, and he's coming a different way now. He can't come the old way to us in the modern day. He got to come modern with that thing. He got to modernize his lies and deceptions to abort and kill God's children. Molech, y'all. M-O-L-E-C-H. Let me show you something right now. 1821. Leviticus 18 verse 21 says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed, thy seed, the baby, the seed, your child, Pass through the fire to Molech. Uh-oh. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. When your baby's passing, when your baby's coming out through abortion, it's passing through the fire, being murdered to Molech, an abortion God, an abortion demon. Woo, you didn't know that, did you? Read it. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hold on. Not finished. Stay in Leviticus with me. Go to chapter 20. And look at verse 2. I'm going to start reading there. Again. Thou shalt say to the children of Israel. Whosoever he be. Of the children of Israel. Or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel. That give it any of his seed unto Molech. That's the abortion demon. Waiting for your seed. To eat up your seed. Mm -hmm. God, come on people. Come on children of God. Come on Christians. Come on pastors. Come on bishop. Apostle. Prophet. Prophetess. Sunday school teacher. Deacon, missionary, come on, deaconess, come on, trustee, associate minister, come on, psalmist, get with the beat, the heartbeat of the child in the belly. Molech is, is, is still alive. Hold up now. Verse 2. You give it any of your seeds to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Killing babies. So you can't put the abortionists to death now. You can't even have them executed after the judge said they're guilty and they sent them to death row. <laughs> Can't do that. And I will set my face, verse 3 of Leviticus 20. And I will set my face against that man. Most abortionists are men. I wonder why. Mm. Wonder why most abortionists are men. Mm. See lot of that. Ponder that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going into the female's body. Uh-huh. Man. To kill that which God created. Uh-huh. He said, and I will set my face against that man. 
The one that got the baby, got the seed going through the father mole. And will cut him off from among his people. Because he had given up his seed unto mole. To defile my sanctuary. To defile my sanctuary. And to profane my holy name. God is not playing with the abortionists. He is not pleased with Planned Parenthood. He's not playing. He's not pleased with the politicians that vote to abort. He's not pleased. It's right here in the Bible. This is God talking. Verse number four. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man. When he giveth up his seed unto Molech and kill him not. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family. And will cut him off and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech. Don't commit whoredom with a Planned Parenthood. From among their people. And the soul that turning after such, talking about abortion, molek, Planned Parenthood, and the soul that turning after such as have familiar spirits, familiar spirits, today, today in the 21st century, almost the 22nd century, it's the same demon from thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago before the birth of Christ. You better come on up in here. Go a whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut them off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. Lord, right now, sanctify every female with a baby on the inside of them that's thinking about and planning to abort. Sanctify them right now, right where they are. In any city, any town, any country, I don't care where the lady is. If the lady's abortion is planned for in the morning, sanctify her soul to change her mind. She will not abort the baby. She will not kill the child. If the abortion has been planned for months, for weeks, for days, Lord, speak. Speak, Lord. Speak to the whole family. Speak to the mama who's been putting pressure on, the, on her daughter. Speak to grandparents. Speak to the boyfriend. Everyone who's involved who's pressuring her saying that you don't need a baby right now. You're too young. You don't need a baby right now. You're too poor. You don't need a baby right now. Mess up your future. Your boyfriend gone. He left you already. You raised the baby by yourself. Speak to him, Lord. Turn those Turn that pressure, Lord, to comfort. Speak to her. Let her know that you'll take care of her and the baby. So that was Molech, y'all. That demon is still alive and doing the evil to kill babies. Okay? Mm -mm -mm. Hold up. I got abortion written down here with Amos. Hold on. I got something over here with Amos. Let me find Amos. Hon, I got to find Amos. Hold on, church. Uh, let me find one of the um, uh, minor prophets because it, it looked like I wrote down a real, a real important word. Oh, there it is, Amos. I wrote down a real important word here. Hold on, I wrote something. Amos one thirteen. I can't wait to see this. Hold on, Amos one thirteen. What does it say? Ooh, hold on. Amos one thirteen. I'm gonna underline it too. One thirteen. Here it is. Thus said the Lord. Who said it? The Lord said it. Pastor Angelo Jones didn't say it. Thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women with child. Uh-oh. 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 Hold on. They ripped up the woman with child. Did you hear that? In Amos, the prophet, thus said the Lord, 
for three transgressions of the children of Ammon. And for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they have ripped up the women with child. Oh, that's an abortion of Gilead. They ripped up the women with child that they might enlarge their border, that they might get rich. Hold on. Abortionists are ripping up the bodies of women to get the babies out for money. Filthy lucre. Abortion is a money game. The more babies they kill, the more money they get, the richer they get. It's a money game. Every abortion. Ching, ching. Ching, ching to the abortion. Ching, ching to uh, Planned Parenthood. Ching, ching. Government writing big fat Checks to Planned Parenthood. Big fat money. Ching, ching. There it is. They have ripped up the women with child of Gilead that they might enlarge their border. Luxurious homes. Luxury vehicles. Oh, sweet vacations. The best of schools. The best of everything. Clothing. Anything you want. Money, money, big bank accounts ripped up the women with child to enlarge their border. There it is right there in Joel 113. Ooh, that's serious. Joel 113, y'all, that's serious. That's serious right there. My God, my God. That's serious. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Planned Parenthood and abortions are walking together because they agree. Did you know that the fruit of the womb is blessed? Psalm 127, right? Mm. Fruit of the womb is blessed. I know one thing that God said before I formed thee in the belly. I told you last week before I formed thee in the belly. He told Elijah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, my God. Come on, y'all. I anointed thee. Called you to the nations. Boy, this thing is big. The seed is important to God. When the seed has been planted by sex. When the seed is in the body. Ooh, God Almighty. Ooh. Mm -mm. The seed belongs to God. You will not abort the child. Job 21 and 8 says, Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. When you let that little baby come out of your belly, and you see that little beautiful little child stretching and yawning and kicking and crying. And you pick that little baby up in your arm. You're so glad you did not kill this child. This beautiful little baby. The seed is established in your sight. You are connected for life. This baby is sweet. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Would thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it in thy barn? Job 39, 12. The child. The seed is the child. Bring the child home. Woo! Come on, somebody. Bring the child home. My God, my God. A seed shall serve him. He said, I'm a, I've called you to the nations. Abortion would have killed that preacher. Abortion would have killed him. Abortion. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. How can you kill someone who's getting ready to inherit the earth? Tell me, how can you do that? The seed. The seed, the seed is the child. It's been planted in you. 
You got to bring forth the seed for a harvest. Life. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Woo! That's your baby coming out with you to love the Lord with you. Woo! 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 Let me, um, I said it's a person to see. It's a person, not a fetus. 1 Corinthians 15, 38. But God giveth it a body. What? But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed, his own body. Mm. Ooh, ooh, this is serious. Oh, this is serious. This is serious. Satan hates your baby. Satan hates your seed. Satan hates your seed. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. He hates the woman who's having the child. Ever since he hated Eve. He became the enemy of every woman. Our original mother, Eve. He became the adversary of the women. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hold on for a minute. Mm. Let me tell you something right now. Planned Parenthood, Roe versus Wade, and 60 million babies killed in their mother's womb since Roe versus Wade. 60 million babies have been sent to Molech. Herod has killed 60 million babies. My God, my God, my God. Are you kidding me? Well, look. Let me touch on something. Remember I said um, abortion would have killed me? Let's look at a few names of some celebrities who were almost aborted. You ever heard of Jack Nicholson? One that flew over the cuckoo nest. One that sits on the front row. Used to sit on the front row at all the Lakers game back when Magic Johnson then was playing. You know about Jack Nicholson. Well, they said his mother was pressured by her peers to have an abortion. That's his testimony. Jack Nicholson said his mother was pressured by her peers. Father shut the peers' mouth up that's pressuring the young lady to have the abortion. Shut the peer's mouth who's trying to get the boyfriend to put pressure on his girlfriend to have the abortion. Shut the peer's mouth, Lord. Let the peer's, Lord, tell her about Jesus. Let the peer's, Lord, speak. Have your baby. I'm still your friend. I'll still be there with you. Have your child. Jack Nicholson. Abortion would have killed Jack Nicholson. Hold on. Who is Andrea Bocelli? Andrea Bocelli is the name. Sound like an opera star or something. Well, he's a celebrity. It's a celebrity. His mother was advised to have an abortion after she was misdiagnosed with appendicitis while she was pregnant. Misdiagnosed, ain't no misdiagnosed, no such thing. It's a, it's a demon deceiving the doctor. When you are misdiagnosed, it's a demon blocking the doctor from what's really going on with you. You think a demon can't blind an x-ray machine? 
from seeing it. An MRI machine. Devils are the Satan is um, hold on. He is the father of this world. Cook down the mind. Ooh. Ooh, come on, somebody. Satan know how to work technology to his favor. He does it all the time. Been doing it. His mama was misdiagnosed with appendicitis while she was pregnant. They told her to abort the baby. Abort the baby. Because you already jacked up. You already sick. And she wasn't. Now the baby came out and became a famous celebrity. Another thing that they diagnosed. I've heard testimonies where the baby in the womb is misdiagnosed. They put pressure on the parents. Married couples put pressure on the on the on the parents to kill the child. Said the child was going to come out brain dead. Child's going to come out autistic, Down syndrome, or whatever disability that the doctor could misdiagnose. And they said, no, we're going to have this baby. Get out of my face. Possess abortionist demon, doctor working for Satan. You ain't unawares. Get out of here. I'm not aborting no baby. And when the baby came out, the baby was 1% fine. But they killed the baby on a misdiagnosis. It's not a misdiagnosis. There's no such thing as a misdiagnosis. You, you can call it what you want to call it. I call it the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles of the devil? Tricks. <laughs> the tricks of the devil. I want you to see or want you to do what he want you to do or what he wants you to see. Hold on. A rapper, a rapper named The Game. I never heard of The Game. But there was a rapper named The Game. He was almost aborted. Let's see. A rapper named The Game. He said, whenever I'm in the booth and I get exhausted, when he's in the booth putting raps together, I guess, in the studio, and I get exhausted, I think what it what if Marie Baker, that's his mama's name. I think what if Marie Baker got that abortion, meaning him, aborting him. Hold on. See how he's still thinking about it? He's a grown man making money rapping a celebrity. And sometimes when he rapping and getting his little rap together, he's wondering what if his mama had aborted him. Abortion would have killed him. In his song, he made a song, Hate It or Love It, hinting that his mother was considering having an abortion. My God, my God. The game. The game. See here? Deliverance is needed. Healing is needed right here between him and his mama. They come tell something about when you want to abort and you don't abort. That's what I'm saying. You got to get into the word of God. There's a spirit of rejection that's been released on the baby. And the baby can come out your womb and start growing up, still feeling something and don't know why they're feeling a spirit of rejection. Because they were almost aborted. They were almost rejected for uh, death, for permanent death. So here he is making a song, hate it or love it. That my time's up already. Good God of mine. Hate it or love it. Hinting that his mother was considering having an abortion. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you all of the glory. Lord, I thank you for calling me to save the seed. <laughs> I thank you for calling me to work on behalf of these unborn babies who can't speak for themselves. And how you showed me how to go to the word and show them what you have to say about abortions, what you have to say to Planned Parenthood, which is the largest abortion organization in this country. 
Yes, indeed. I can't wait to get on them. But I will tell you this about them before I leave. I wrote this down tonight. Uh, I wrote this down tonight. The annual report from Planned Parenthood just came out last week. Over the past 10 years, the latest annual report is a 15-year high in abortions during a pandemic year. Corona. Corona is shutting down everything else, but it's not shutting down abortions. Because why? It's working with abortions. I'm just going to leave you with this. You hear what I just said? Planned Parenthood's annual report said that there's a 15-year high in abortions during a pandemic year, during Corona, that gummit. But everything else is down. All the other health care services are down. Breast exams, women, are down 63.9%. Prenatal services down 72.3%. Abortions up 7.7%. And guess what else? Government funding is up 6.8%. Bam. Mm-hmm. Pray on that. Numbers don't lie. Planned Parenthood is not a women health care clinic. It's the nation's largest abortion business. Over 350,000 abortions and not even 3,000 adoptions by Planned Parenthood. 350,000 abortions and not even 3,000 adoptions in the past 15 years. Love y'all. If y'all want to sow into this power pack ministry, hit the cash out. Sow a seed, a different type of seed. So a financial seed, dollar sign, heaven's best, one, one, one. God told me to ask you, and I'm going to ask you. We need, during this time of Corona, we need more money, more money, more money. All these churches closing down because people won't give them any money or pay their tithes. Let me tell you, God got us. He always told me, don't be concerned with the money, nor the number of people. Trust God. If you want to sow? So into this power pack church. You see heaven best. You see the address. You can send it there. Pastor Angelo O. Jones at gmail.com. Pastor Angelo O. Jones at gmail.com. But for, for but to bless us financially, send it to cash out. Heaven's best. One word. One, one, one. Or PayPal me at heaven's best church. No apostrophe. PayPal me slash heaven's best church. Woo! Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the abortion spirit. I bind up Herod now in Jesus' name. You lying dog from the pit of hell. You couldn't kill Jesus, and you can't kill his babies. I bind up that Molech devil that they will not send any more babies through the fire to Molech. In the name of Jesus. I bind it up and I'm with Amos. I'm with Amos, the prophet Amos. They shall not rip the child out of any more women for financial gain or any gain. In Jesus' name, no abortions, no more abortions in America. No more abortions. Molette, gone. Herod, gone. No more Planned Parenthood in America. We don't need you. In Jesus' name, the baby wins because God wins. I love y'all. Kiss all the babies for me. Kiss all the babies for me. Jesus loves the babies. He says, suffer the little children to come unto me. And if you hurt this child, it's better that you tie a millstone around your neck and cast it out into the sea. You might as well do that. You touch a baby here. You hear me, abortionist? Keep touching the baby. Uh -huh. I love you, Jesus. And Jesus, I love the children. God bless y'all. Amen.